All right, looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Azusan session. How about it? I bet you didn't expect that shit to happen. So let's make a little bit of an announcement and, as usual, start this stream. Let me bring up my Discord server. Uh, and let me see, let me see, what are we doing uh, today? Uh, Red Circle, live on Twitch. And today we're continuing developing our homemade programming language. That's what we're doing today. Uh, I'm going to give the link to the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash sodding, and I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. There we go. The stream has officially started. So today we're not going to be doing anything special. Today we're going to be fixing the tests, right? So uh, not everybody knows that, but there are tests that come with the uh, port itself, and they're meant to actually test the port programming language right and they work fine for the python version of port but they break on the port port version of port right so because there are some discrepancies in the behavior right there's not really that many bugs in port.port .port, it's just like some of the reporting features are missing for instance uh, the port.port .port can detect some situation but it doesn't know how to properly report it right so there is just like a stop there saying uh, okay so implement that reporting properly tell to the user the location and so on and so forth so and uh, let's just go ahead and run uh, the test specifically the test folder right so we actually test against several things we have unit tests we have examples and we have uh, solutions for all the problems i did a stream on you know, uh, solving oily problems in a port. And I also test against them as well, because why not? They're there, they're testable, so why not just use them as tests? Uh, so majority of these things are working fine in port. Uh, majority of the examples work fine. Majority of, like, all the oily problems, I think, work fine. The only problems we have here is the tests, uh, right? So let's actually run those tests and collect all of the files that are failing. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Caitlin, the cutie, but to Bati Wu, um, Alan, Mentech, a real tiger. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As you can see, all of these tests are fading. So, and uh, we're gonna just basically take all of the test cases that are failing and we're gonna try just knock them off one by one. Uh, that's gonna be the today's stream. So, we have 30 uh test cases that are failing and uh let me actually quickly copy paste this entire stuff and i'm gonna do something like uh failed txt and i'm gonna put them in here uh okay so this is how i put this stuff so these are the tests uh might as well uh do some sort of an indication uh right so what is already fixed and what is not already fixed but maybe it's not that important i'm gonna be just removing the lines um okay so uh, let's uh, go uh, let's uh, go uh we're gonna start with uh, failed uh, with the test here all right so if i take a look at the tests here uh this just tests the here intrinsic and here intrinsic basically uh gives you a string that uh, describes the location of that specific token in here uh all right so i can even show you how it works so we can do something like here.port all right and i i need to include the standard library i think all right so here is here and i can just print this and i think all right so I can do port.py, compile this entire thing and just run here.port. And uh, as you can see, it's kind of difficult to see what it printed, but because it didn't print the new line, but that's by design. Uh, right, it printed uh, here.port, right, the file name of the program, then the row it's at and the column it's starting at. Right. So, and you can use this thing to do all sorts of like uh, error reporting or maybe to do reporting and stuff like that. So then you can do something like to do not implemented. Uh, right. You can print this thing as well. And if you try to run this entire thing, it will print you like this specific place not implemented. And uh, for instance, in the text editors like Emacs, if uh, they can parse that format, uh, it will actually work quite well. Right. So I can do something like port.py. Uh, port.py and you can compile it uh, here.port and there we go as you can see it says not implemented and Emacs parses this format and you can just click in here and it will jump here very convenient I use this thing throughout the entire uh, port.port .port implementation 
uh, for different things like assertions, failed assertions, and maybe some to do's uh, and whatnot. So it allows me to quickly jump to those places to like, you know, troubleshoot and inspect what happened and whatnot. So it's, it's a very simple feature, but it works quite well. It works quite well. Uh, hello, hello everyone. How are you guys doing? So, and uh, we have a test case that just literally does the thing that I implemented, right? And it is failing for whatever reason. So we need to find out why is it failing. So we have a subscription, just a second. Uh, Kelvium, thank you so much for two months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our Epic uh, Porth Club. Uh, am I in the Epic Porth Club? Hello, yeah, yeah, you are, you are, you're still there. So thank you, thank you so much for Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at the test key that is currently failing. So here, .porth, it's literally doing that right it's literally doing that but on top of that it also exits with a uh, non-zero exit code and let's see what exactly is going on because i know that port.port .port is capable of uh, handling this entire uh, thing in fact i can just like demonstrate you that and i'm gonna just like do this and as you can see it did exactly that right so just like yeah produce this entire thing and uh, let's run the tests uh, test.py run uh, tests uh here dot port there we go and here are the discrepancies so as you can see the expected output uh was this and this is the actual output so everything is fine in here the only difference is the return code right return code and this is the problem even though if i do something like um i suppose output right it's uh prints what you, what it's supposed to print and the exit code is 69 if you try to do that through the port itself all right so this is a test here uh dot port right so if you try to run this entire thing and you inspect the exit code it's still zero so essentially port dot port does not handle the exit code of the child process and doesn't sort of forward that exit code to the whole application right so port.py actually takes the exit code of the child process that it's running and exits with the same exit code uh, so then you can assert like that during the test and stuff like that but port dot port apparently does not do that uh, probably because it's not implemented yet and that's why this test is failing and that's why this test exists to check for the compiler being able to do that so the test working as intended so and we just need to implement that feature right so in the port that port we just need to see where we run the child process see how can we capture the exit code of the child process and exit with the same exit code letting the tests you know pass that's what we're gonna be doing sounds good Sounds Gucci? Sounds Tamaguchi? Let's go. And this is only one file. And we have, uh, how many of them do we have in here? We have 30 files. We have 30 tests to fix, right? <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, we're probably not going to fix all of them. Uh, so it's just going to be like, you know, a chill stream where I just go through the failed tests and just fixing them and whatnot. So it is what it is, my friends, and it isn't what it isn't. Um, is port just like LLVM? No, port is more like Emacs. Uh, so, hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Mm, okay, so let's go. Uh, let me see where we have this entire thing. Uh, I suppose I'm going to start with the place where uh, we handle the minus uh, R flag, right? So minus R flag basically indicates that you need to run this thing. And uh, when the child process exit with non-zero exit code uh, does not reflect that. Okay, I even have a to-do for that. Would you look at that? Like, I anticipated this, uh, this shit, so I had a to-do for that. Thank you. Thank you so much, past me, for actually uh, leaving a to-do that I never read, and I just encountered that problem yet again myself. Okay, so if I do run, uh, this is what we're doing, and we're just calling function called cmd echoed. Right, cmd runs the command, and echoed also logs the run, uh, run command. Uh, right, so let me take a look. So this is gonna be proc cmd echoed, and yeah, we also have some sort of like a global flag that, uh, you know, disables the logging if the user doesn't want to. And uh, here we're allocating a structure W. It's not really a structure. I don't remember. Is that W status or something like that? I don't remember. 
so execvp so this goes into the child process right usually when you do a fork it forks the process into the child process and the parent process this is the child process right and here we have a par parent process uh, parent process and uh, somewhere down there we have an error we couldn't fork a child right maybe we couldn't fork the child but I don't know, let's say a child, some, some random child we couldn't fork. Uh, now, then uh, we'd use um, wait, wait for syscall. Uh, we're using wait for syscall and apparently we're not really handling it, uh, handling it properly uh, at all. So let me actually read about wait for syscall and what you're supposed to do with that, because I don't remember how to use that. <laughs> right. So it uh, has W status, some options and usage. I suppose we care only about W status. So what W status actually does? It's a very, very interesting question. Does it do anything useful? Uh, w status, W status. It doesn't even say anything about it. It just says, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, is there anything else we can uh, read about? Maybe it is explained in the wait. Uh, wait also accepts W status, right? So uh, the call is equivalent to wait PID. And uh, if the uh, wait status is null, wait and wait PID store status information. Okay, so in here we, yeah, you're supposed to use a bunch of macros to determine what the hell has happened, right? So if exited returns true, if the child terminated normally, blah, blah, blah. Then you can check the exit status, uh, so it basically tell you whether it was terminated or not. Uh, of status uh, argument that child specified to call exit, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Mago should be employed only if exited, because otherwise it could it could have actually terminated. This is very interesting. So maybe to extract like all of the necessary information, we'll have to port these macros to port which could be rather interesting, I think. Uh, right, so we'll have to do that. So, uh, right now, what we do with uh, W status, we literally do nothing. Though we can try to maybe log it, right? So let's do something like uh, W status, right? And uh, I just want to see what, what it's doing, like what it's uh, returning to us. So I'm going to place the status, I'm going to read it as an integer, and I think the size of the W status is exactly an integer, so everything's fine. And I can print that as an integer, and let's print the uh, new line. So that will give us the number, right? After that, uh, I might go ahead and just probably recompile the compiler. This, this is one of the things I want to do. I want to just recompile the compiler. So I'm going to use FASM, Linux, uh, Linux x86-64. And uh, I'm going to just do that. So port dot port. So compilation took that. What's interesting is that while I'm streaming, the type checking takes two seconds. When I'm not streaming, it actually shaves off one second. So it's usually uh, 0 0.9 or 0 0.8 seconds, right? It's usually under a second, but when I'm streaming, it like takes longer. Uh, but it's it's actually significantly faster than it was before. And this is due to inline procedures, by the way. We just implemented simple inline procedures. And I think the type checking time dropped like in half. Uh, just because of inlining a lot of small little things, so we don't call to them, we just like, you know, fall through to them, and, and that's basically it. So, yeah, so inlining actually optimized, if you have like small things that you want to just inline. So, yusu, 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 kawaii freaking desu. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right, so uh, let's uh, continue. So we recompiled the entire thing, and now I can try to do com run, and uh, let's just run this entire thing. And as you can see, W status essentially returned zero in all of these cases, which is rather weird, right? So it returns zero in all of them. Uh, so here it run nothing, then it run LD, and so on and so forth, which is, I don't like that. I really, really don't like that it just returned zero. 
Oh, I know why. Because all of these programs exited with zero. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, so here, dot port is not the one that is in the testing. So if we exit with 69, uh, the last one, uh, I think. Mm, mm. Excuse me. Uh, so it says here not implemented. And it doesn't... Oh, I see. I'm an idiot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, because... <laughs> I really need to fix this thing where port.port uh, doesn't, like, use the same name as the file name because that screwed me over already several times, but that's fine. So, uh, let me rebuild the compiler and once it is succeeded, I'm gonna rename output to just regular port. It's gonna be just a regular port, and then I can do something like uh, port. Uh, there we go, and it is still zero. It is still zero because I removed it because I wanted to test something. Now we're talking. Look at that. Look at that shit. Now we are talking. But you know what? I would like to see that being in hexadecimal, right? But I don't want to spend too much time implementing something like put x, but that would be actually kind of cool. Uh, being able to just say put x and it would print it as the hexadecimal. Um, I think this is very, very cool, but um, I don't know. So maybe I'm going to put some sort of a to-do about that uh, into the standard library, right? So let's find proc put u uh, and this is going to be a to-do implement put x that prints uh, a number in hex. Uh, so for now, it is not really that important because I can just like grab this entire number and uh, put it in Python, right? So Python 3 specifically. And this is going to be something like hex. There we go. So it's a 45. So we know that the, you know, the least significant byte is zero. Uh, but uh, the second byte in here is 45. And if you take a look at what uh, 45 in hexadecimal means, it means 69. So the exit code is located somewhere here. So it's basically, um, I think the W status allocates different bytes for different like purposes. One is for like to indicate whether it exited or terminated, right? Another one for the exit code, if it exited, but in terminated state, that exit code doesn't make any sense and so on and so forth. It's sort of like a compact structure. I think that's what it is. And uh, in C, I think to like access the fields of that structure, they're using different macros, right? So, and maybe we should have like similar like functions similar to these macros. Luckily, we have inline procedures so we can use inline procedures instead of these uh you know macros or whatever the fuck they are so anyway let's go to uh maybe just wait uh, i think this is just wait and i want to find the definitions of things like if exit uh if exit status and so on and so forth right uh so is there any explanation or is all of that behind this stuff Mm, since uh, returns true if the child process. So is the format of this thing like pretty much for Linux only option C below? Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. So I'm just thinking whether it's going to be portable or not. Oh, who cares? We're supporting only Linux anyway, so. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to just grab if exited and I'm going to go into user include, right? So I'm going to start from here and I'm going to try to find where this thing is defined, right? So it's probably like defined like this and let's do grab rn and just go through the, all of the headers recursively and just see, um, you know, where it is defined or maybe it's not defined here. Maybe it's defined somewhere in a different place. We'll see. Uh, either way, we're going to learn something new about this kind of stuff. Putks. Beat fields time. Mm, I don't think beat fields are going to be super useful in here because like the information is stored like in bytes level, but who knows, maybe it's also stored in bits. 
Maybe it's also stored in bits. Who knows? Okay, we found it. It's in STD Leap. Who would have thought? And here they are. Here they are behind even more macros. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, cool. Uh, define the macros. Uh, define them this way. So, and is it defined anywhere else? Uh, no, it is not defined anywhere else. Uh, let's start over, but this time let's search for these macros because they're behind one layer of indirection. Uh, right, so uh, so it's an exit status. Um, yeah, I think I think we're just gonna go with underscore underscore. Mm -mm. And we couldn't find anything, which is rather interesting. Why we couldn't find anything? So let's actually go a little bit higher in here. And let's just try to search for this thing. So maybe it's like somewhere high, maybe in, in user shared or something like that. Who knows? Uh, we just need to find where this entire thing is defined. It's always behind several layers of like macros or something like that. It's always like that. Um, though it would be maybe better to find the documentation for the wait for syscall um, and like description of like what actually returns on what, on what kernels and stuff like that. But eh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Might as well actually do that right now. Mm. Okay, uh, Linux uh, wait for syscall. Mm -hmm. So this is a um, uh, syscall specification. Uh, okay, uh, just a second. Let me try to open that. And this uh, website does not open. Uh, okay, so ref specs. Right, W status, and they don't describe the W status. Every time I'll try to search for any of those things, right, I will end up finding just man page for the user of the function, but not for the developers of this function. Uh, it's always like, like that, right? It's always like that, unfortunately. Uh, what's the difference between wait, wait three, wait uh, Linux hint? Um, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna help me, right? It's definitely not gonna help me. Mm -hmm. Though I have an idea, actually, I have an idea. What if we just apply uh, a preprocessor on a code that uses that thing? Uh, permission denied. Okay, so I think this is a waste of time. I think this is a waste of time. So uh, let's try to do something different this time. Um, something different. I'm going to do main.c. Right. Hmm, wait for. So what do we need to include? We need to include a lot of shit in here. All right. So this is the stuff we are including. Uh, this is the stuff we are including, and then I'm gonna do int main return zero, and here I might as well just do uh, if exited, right, x. And instead of compiling, I'm gonna try to do cpp on that thing, just to see what happened. Uh, and that's basically what it did, right, so that's how it determined whether it's exited or not. <laughs> so, and that's how we can do that as well, why not? So that's the that's the number. Uh, what else can we can we need in here? Uh, so that one was actually wait. Uh, exit status return the exit status of the child. This contains uh, of the least significant eight bits of the status argument that child specified. Okay, wx uh, status. Uh, okay. Uh, exit status, not X status. I don't know what I'm talking about. So this is going to be X, uh, right? So let's actually put it like this. Uh, all right, and yeah, this is exactly what I observed, by the way. Right. So that is that essentially. Uh, so let's just go ahead and add that to the standard library of port. <laughs> this is a genius scheme. I'm telling you. Uh, I'm telling you. So wait for. Uh, so here it is, and here we're gonna just inline, uh, like define some inline things. So this one is gonna be uh, w if exited, right? So let me go somewhere here. 
So this is exited. And we're going to accept just an integer. Uh, and in here, we're going to return a Boolean, right? So unlike C macros, by the way, this thing is going to be typed, right? Well, I mean, it's it's still also typed but because this entire thing can return Boolean. But you, you see what I mean, um, right? So here, um, I'm going to do something like puts uh, to do um, if exited is not implemented. Right, so this is going to be something like this. I'm going to exit with this stuff. Uh, and let me put this thing in here. So that's basically the implementation. Might as well clean this up and just do it like that. Right, so this is wife excited. <laughs> wife excited. Uh, that's what it is. It's a wife excited. Uh, so another one is going to be inline proc. Uh, exit status, right? So this is the exit status. We accept an integer and we are returning an integer as well. So that's what we're doing. Uh, might as well copy paste this thing. Um, so uh, W exit status, W exit status. And uh, in here, I'm going to also copy paste this stuff. Right, so that's the actual thing that we need to implement. So, cool. Easy, busy, lemon squeezy. So it's, it's kind of like the idea of writing something in your source code and then finding the definition of that thing by compiling it is rather fascinating. And I really like that idea. You see, like we didn't try to, we didn't find this thing by grabbing. We tried to grab it, but we couldn't find it. So what we did, we just used it and then asked the compiler, show me how it expanded. This is uh, an idea that I want to explore and improve upon in Porth. Uh, as already uh, probably mentioned in the past, I want to be able to do the following thing. Imagine that you have like a huge code base uh, of files are scattered across the system and across several projects and stuff like that. But the compiler knows where they are. You don't know where they are, right? So you know that there's a function foo somewhere. You can call it. Your program compiles when you call it, but you want to find its definition. Uh, what I want to be able to do, I want to have something like a special keyboard where uh, key keyword, not keyboard, keyword. Right, so it's going to be keyword and you put where and the um, the function name. And during the compilation, the compilation will fail by telling you exact location of this function because the compiler knows it. The compiler knows it. Why not just ask compiler, tell me where that thing is located? Right in the place where I need to know that. So this is actually very convenient and it's very much editor and IDE agnostic. You see what I mean? Right, you, you can say just use an IDE or an editor that knows that LSP, blah, 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 all of these sophisticated or complicated things. Yes, 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 it's cool. But these kind of projects are first of all overcomplicated and they're gonna deteriorate in like five, 10 years because of their overcomplicatedness. This thing is um, essentially gonna leave, this feature is gonna leave as long as the language, as the compiler leaves. It's, uh, it's editor agnostic, it's IDE agnostic, you just ask the compiler. Compiler knows the information, why can't you just ask that information and extract it from the compiler? Uh, so we kind of have a similar feature already with uh, question mark, question mark, question mark. So it fails the compilation when it encounters this thing and shows you the current status of the type checking, essentially what are the types on the, uh, on the stack. And that feature was proven actually very useful during the development because at any time I can like I cannot keep the whole stack in my head why can't I just ask the compiler show me the current stack so yeah you see so it, the compiler holds a lot of useful information and I want to explore the idea of extracting that useful information from the compiler Right, so I think it's a very cool idea and I'm really surprised that nobody explores that idea. People kind of exploring it, but in a very like weird, overcomplicated ways, like with, you know, HTTP service running on your local machine or whatever the fuck it is, I don't know. So uh, anyway, you see what I mean. Mm-mm. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Hmm. 
Mm-mm-mm-mm. I'm just looking through the chat to see if any uh is, is there any like good questions in here? Interesting on topic questions. Mm-mm. Have you tried to rip grab for grabbing recursively? No, I have not. And I don't see any reason to try it because grab works fine. Okay, so no on topic questions. Let's continue development. Uh, so we need to figure out how we're going to use all of that. Uh, so let me go to I support port. And uh, here we probably want to check the the status couldn't wait until the child process has finished. Uh, all right. <clears throat> um, so now I can just grab the W status and read it as an integer and I can check if it's exited. Right. And if it is in fact exited, uh, right, if it is in, in fact exited, I can now take it again, uh, read it again uh, and do something like uh, exit status, right, exit status. Uh, and if that exit status is uh, greater than than zero, we might want to actually exit with that exit status. So let's do something like uh, dupe. Um, actually, not greater. Yeah, yeah, greater than zero. And if it is, uh, we're gonna just uh, dupe it again, I suppose, and just exit with it. <laughs> right. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But if it's fine, if it's fine, I think we should not forget to drop it. Uh, so that's basically how it's gonna go. Uh, and let me try to compile the entire thing just to see if I didn't screw up any, you know, typing and whatnot. So I'm gonna use port zero. Mm, unknown uh, inputs. Oh, this is very interesting because inputs is defined in uh, like somewhere below. So it's defined somewhere here. So it can see that yet. Uh, reporting an expected type on the stack is not... This is what I was talking about. You see, the uh, compiler managed to find a situation when there is an expected type on the stack, but it doesn't know how to report that yet. Right. So, and instead of reporting it, it actually tells you, I don't know how to report that, uh, but it, it's located here. So it, it's located here. So there is an, ex an expected type. Uh, right. So, and this is something that I probably forgot to do. Uh, right. So in here, I don't have to drop anything. Int goes in, int goes out. But here I can drop and push something like false, or I can just cast to Boolean whatever I have. Right. So, and now it will compile properly. Uh, MX thefts Z, I hope I pronounced your nickname correctly. Thank you so much for four months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic Porth Porth Club. Porth Porth indeed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so, all right, as you can see, everything seems to be compiling. Uh, so I'm gonna do it like that. Uh, Fasm Linux x8664 and move output to Porth, right? So, with Fasm, it's going to just compile a little bit faster. Uh, okay, so if I try to use uh, this thing for uh, this stuff, it is going to uh, say that if exited is not implemented. You see, so this is precisely why you want to use here, right? Because it will tell you that this thing is not implemented yet, so you can go there and implement it, right? So that's pretty pogue. Uh, how are we going to be doing all that? So we have this thing. Uh, what I need to do here is I need to end it with this number, right? I need to end it with this number. Unfortunately, we do not support hexadecimal. If I just push this thing on the stack, it says unknown word. So let's uh, go to a Python and I'm just going to convert it to um, to decimal in 127. Okay, so I'm going to just put it like that. And after that, I'm going to use end, and then I'm going to check if this entire thing is equal to zero. Right, so I suppose this is the entire implementation, right? As simple as that. And since it's unlined, there will be no overhead of, uh, you know, calling this function, which is pretty exciting, I think. Uh, all right, so I probably need to um, recompile my uh, original compiler. Mm -mm. And then I'm going to try to compile this thing. And now W exit status doesn't work. Okay, that's fine. So we can do a similar thing. Uh, so what I need to do is to take this number. Right. 
So it's 65, this, uh, all right. F0, F0, and then I end with this thing, and then I need to shift right by this thing, so shift right, and I think that is essentially it, right? That is essentially it. Um, hmm. yeah. I think that's fine. Uh, so now, if I try to do that, uh, I need to recompile the original compiler. Recompiling the compiler and then using the new compiler to do this thing. And unfortunately, this thing exited with non-zero exit code. And I wonder why. Uh, probably because... Yeah, it still exits with 69, so it didn't work at all. Uh, which is rather interesting, why it didn't work. So it's supposed to work, I think. Uh, so CMD echoed, right, so in here... Mm, we're supposed to dupe exit, right? So we take a look at the zero, at the zero. We can try to log this entire thing, right? So uh, let's do info, uh, exit it, new. And then we can take a look at the exit status. So somewhere here, uh, we can just do um, info, uh, exit status uh, e puts then i'm gonna duplicate this thing in here and print it e put u uh, and then i'm gonna print the new line all uh, right it would be nice to maybe align uh, with put or maybe e put there we go so that looks a little bit better and um yep yeah, that's cool mm, so here we push the WS uh, status, like exit status, and we're duplicating it through the entire thing and then we're dropping it. So this kind of forms a block that would be nice to sort of indent like this. Right, so I, what I notice is that in uh, concatenative stack-based languages, you kind of form blocks where you push something, then you duplicate, uh, swap, rotate, and then you drop that thing. So you want to work with these sort of like blocks, if that makes any sense. You know what I mean? Right, so you push it, work with it, and then drop it. Uh, so, and it's it's really nice to denote these blocks with like a little bit of indentation. Um, I have an idea for a construction that kind of automates that in, in port, but we'll, we'll, we'll have like a separate stream for that. Uh, okay, so let me try to recompile the compiler. Hopefully I didn't make any stupid fucking mistakes, man. And let me try to do this thing. All right, so generating, exited, exit status zero, All right? Then this thing exited. And for whatever freaking reason, exit status zero in here. Uh, even though if I call output, if I call output, exit status is 69. So something went wrong in the exit status, All right? So let's take a look at the exit status. Uh, so I do end on that thing and I shift to write it. So I'm not really sure what the hell is going on, really. Uh, so let me, let me see. So I'm going to try to print the exit status yet again, just in case. Uh, exit, uh, W status rather, right? So this is the W status. So this is E puts. And then uh, W status read the entire thing, put U, E put U, and then a new line. So this is going to be E puts. And let me try to recompile the compiler. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to just do that thing. Okay. So W status in both of the cases is zero yet again. What the hell has happened? <laughs> the fuck? Uh, I am definitely exiting with zero, but now I, I remember it actually printing some number. What did ch what changed? What did they change? Oh boy, there we go again. So I, I made some sort of a mistake and I just can't see it anymore. Mm, you might want to pass minus R flag. Oh yeah, thank you so much, yes. Okay, finally, thank you so much. I forgot minus half flag. Uh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it, it exits appropriately. Okay, uh, so I guess I'm having a little bit of a performance anxiety right now, so I'm really sorry. 
I really apologize for that. So let's get rid of all of the uh, all of the debugging here, so it's not really needed anymore. Um, so we don't need that, and we don't really need that. So yeah, is it okay for CMD echo if it returned like non-zero exit code, just drop the whole application? I think it's fine for now. I think it's fine for now, and we'll see if we're gonna change that a little bit later. Speaking of blocks, by the way, speaking of blocks, we can uh, sort of extract this thing out as well because we are kind of repeating it. So we might as well just call it once and only duplicate it, right, and drop it at the end. And that kind of forms uh, yet another block. And within this thing, you'll have to do dupe again. Right, you have to do dupe again, but then, so you, you see, I have like two nested dupe blocks now. So pushing something uh, and dropping it forms a block, and also duping it uh, try uh, basically accesses the thing on top of the stack. Right, so this is uh, here. Then I'm checking if it's exited. Then I extract it exit status by pushing another value in here, and if the exit status is zero, I'm exiting with that. Then I dropping closing this block. Right, I'm closing this block, and then I'm closing this block. Right, so this is something interesting I discovered by working with concatenative stack-based languages is that uh, pushing, drop, and dupe can form like blocks, structured blocks. If that makes any sense, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can somebody tell me what does dupe do? Uh, push two times on the stack. It takes the element on top of the stack and pushes it again. So if you had something like two on top of the stack, maybe like, let's pull it this way, two, three, four. So this is your stack. And this is the top of your stack. Below it is three and four. So what dupe does to your stack, it duplicates the element on top of it. That's what it does. So you can, you may want to actually uh, Google up fourth stack words, right? Because I basically took all of the like words that manipulate the stack from fourth, right? And there is like a table of the basic uh, fourth stack manipulation words. Uh, let's actually find some of them in here. Uh, so, so there was this thing, uh, fundamental, so this is arithmetics stack words. Oh my god, this is horrible! Where can I find them? Okay, so this is, uh, fourth word. So, swap, dupe, over, rot, drop. Uh, maybe there is a better page that describes all of that, because that one is kind of meh. Uh, Right. The previous one was better. So on this page. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's that's perfect. Stack manipula uh, manipulations. Yeah. There we go. So that's what you want. Why would you hide the table like the content on this thing? Why? That that's like the, the, this is the thing that you shove into the user face so they can choose where they want to jump. Why would you hide that? My God. So bad. I can't believe that. Okay, I'm gonna copy paste that in the chat and uh, I'm gonna put that in the description as well. Uh, right. So, fourth stack uh, manipulation words. We don't support all of them, right? So, but the idea of a lot of these words comes from fourth. And I am about to completely change that. I really don't like the fourth approach uh, to manipulating the stack references. And uh, I implemented a whole fourth compiler using the fourth approach. And it's just horrible. It's really not convenient. And it's, it's clear that it's a really old way of doing things on a computer, right? Because the computers at the time of fourth were limited. These days, computers are capable of much more uh, than before. And you can actually come up with more, like with better constructions. And I think I came up with one. I'm not going to reveal what that construction is until the dedicated stream. We're going to have a dedicated stream where I try to create like a new way of working with the stack. And hopefully it's going to be better than fourth one. Uh, I think I have enough experience with like fourth approach to actually actually come up with something so mm -mm. yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes uh, uh, I still need to do a lot of work with ports before we can go ahead and implement that new approach everything needs to be prepared first uh, okay so what do we got what do we got 
Mm, okay, so we have this thing and let me let me see if I can uh, compile everything. So I wanted to remove all of the logging. I removed all of the logging, but uh, the compiler is not ready yet. So we need to recompile the compiler. The compiler has been recompiled and would you look at that and it exited with 69. 69. And now if I try to do the following thing. Uh, I wanted to... I forgot what I wanted, interestingly enough. Oh yeah, I wanted to just go here and just remove 69 and see if it now exits uh, normally. So it does in fact exit normally. So theoretically, theoretically, if I try to test uh, tests here, uh, it should pass. But it kind of doesn't uh, because I didn't call run. Would you look at that? So the tests now pass, right? Because we implemented, um, you know, handling of the um, of the exit code of the child, right? So that's what we did. And that was kind of cool, I think, right? We stole some code from the standard library of C and stuff like that, and that was fun. Stealing code is always fun. Trust me, it is insanely fun. Uh, all right, so here's that, and that's the entire thing, believe it or not. Uh, right. Make CMD echoed uh, handle the child's uh, exit code. And you know what? I wanted to actually say something like port port. I usually like to indicate like what sort of sub project this change belongs to, because we have several sub projects. Uh, it could be something like port.py or maybe std.port. Uh, it's always nice to indicate like what exactly we are changing in here. In this case, we're changing actually port.port. .port. It also touches std port, but the, the primary change is in port.port. .port. And I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Uh, the source code of this language is completely open. If you wanna check it out, you can find it in here. I'm gonna copy paste it in the chat. And uh, for people who's watching on YouTube, I'm gonna put that in the description, right? So all of that is gonna be in the description. Source code is here. So it's completely free under MIT license. You can do whatever the fuck you want with it, except claiming that you made it. You can even sell that shit if you want to. Just don't claim that you made it. So, and everything's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. Just don't say that you made it and I'm not gonna call my lawyers, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs>